Good evening. I'm Pastor Ken Gaines and uh, pastor of the Spirit Life Ministries International Church here in Wilmington, Delaware. We're located at 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard. And tonight we just want to share some uh, scriptures that pertain to the healing cure. Of course, we understand at Calvary, Jesus bore our sins and took away our sicknesses and diseases in his body on the tree. First Peter 2.24, who, who, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins would live under righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. And so we understand that uh, it was a double cure at Calvary. He took our sins, he also took our sickness and diseases, amen, and we understand that that belongs to us. The healing uh, that comes through the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the children's bread, amen. Now, uh, Jeremiah 33 and 6 says, Behold, I bring in health and cure, and I will cure them and reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. So we see the cure in Jeremiah 33 and 6, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Very familiar passage of scripture. Just want to give you a little backdrop. Uh, Surely he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Um, I believe in Isaiah 53, 4, in the King James Version, it says, Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah says we are. Peter says we were. And so between we are and we were, amen, we have it now. Uh, Psalms 103 and 3, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases. And then Matthew 8, 17, uh, Matthew picks up uh, what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Matthew 8, 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And we know that word bore means to pick up and carry away. Amen. He, he picked up and carried away our sins from us. He lifted up our sins and carried them away. And he also lifted up our sicknesses, our diseases, our abnormalities. Amen. And he carried them away. And the word of God is very emphatic. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, in Matthew 15 and 26, Jesus tells the Syrophoenician woman, he says, Look, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now, uh, it sounds kind of harsh, but he was, uh, by using the term dogs, he was referring to the, the, the Gentile nations, the, the heathen nations that did not have a covenant with Almighty God. They did not have a covenant with Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth me. Uh, they did not know the Lord. And Jesus is saying that my mission at this time is to come and recover the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so the woman, she's being persistent. You know, most people would have got uh, uh, offended right there and stormed off. But she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that come from the children's table. And Jesus says, "Woo! I haven't seen this kind of faith in all of my people. And he tells the woman, um, the devil, uh, that demon spirit, that grievous vexation, that your daughter is experiencing, it's gone from your house. And the word of God is clear. By the time she got home, uh, she had a new house. Amen. She had a new daughter. So the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, Nahum 1-7, and he knows them that trust in him. And I'm saying that 
you really have to uh, begin to employ uh, the study of the healing anointing because in these last dark days that we're living in uh, and with this pandemic, uh, God wants you uh, to be uh, infiltrated with the healing word. He wants you to be saturated with the healing word. He, he wants that healing word to overflow you. Amen. And we know that's uh, how we get that healing word in us. Uh, we get it by, of course, meditating the word of God. We get it by reading the word of God. Uh, we get it by saying what God has said about us. Uh, the confession of the word of God. Moses said, I will say of the Lord. Now, Moses said that. So, you know, that's Old Testament. He says, I will say, of, Moses said emphatically, yes, I'm going to say of the Lord. I'm going to say what God has said about me. I'm not going to just say what I see out here in the wilderness. There's all kinds of uh, uh, creepy things out here. He says, but I'm going to say of the Lord, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you're my God. I'm trusting only in you. And you will deliver me from the snare of the fowler, the coronavirus. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, God is uh, shielding us. Amen. And uh, even for those who, who uh, unfortunately might come in contact with this, uh, we need to let them know that there's a cure. Amen. Uh, Jesus has a cure for his people. Jesus has a cure for humanity. Amen. And uh, even in the Old Testament, it was said of old, I'll bless your bread and water. I'll take sickness from the midst of you so that the number of your days would be fulfilled. Amen. And that was under a, a lesser covenant with lesser benefits. But we know here in the, the new covenant order, amen, the dispensation of grace, God wants this healing anointing to flood your house, amen. He wants it to flood your life. And of course, we understand we have our part and God has his part. So don't be so quick to say, well, if it be the Lord's will, it is his will. His will is his word. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. Amen. You can't be apathetic. You know, it, it's interesting how we're so, you know, in the things of the world and the things of life, you know, we're so tenacious, you know, take no prisoners. I mean, but when it comes to the things of God, well, if the Lord wants it, I guess it'll be not so. Amen. God has his part. We have our part. Amen. Our part is to hide the word in our hearts. Amen. Our job is to put the word of God in us. Amen. God's job is to bring it to pass. Now, uh, in Luke 14, 5, Jesus is, is having a little controversial discussion with um, uh, these Pharisees and, 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 and these uh, people who, uh, Sadducees, and I mean, they're, they're, they're always critiquing Jesus about healing on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, well, the Sabbath day is for man. What a wonderful day to get your healing on the day of rest. And, uh, and then he says in, in, in Luke uh, 14, verse 5, he says, Now, which one of you on the Sabbath day would have a donkey or an ox, a horse, you know, one of your farm animals that would fall into a ditch? And because it's in, because it's the Sabbath day, you're telling me you won't try to get that donkey out. You you won't try to get that ox out. You're the beast of burden that helps you make your money. You know, agriculture was the the way of uh, financing uh, in that day in a big way. You know, you had to you had to uh, had to farm your own land. You know, it wasn't any shop right and acmes and. You know, all these uh, giant and all these grocery stores, you, you know, you had to till the land for yourself. And Jesus says, now, which one of you would have one of your animals fall into a pit and you not try to get them out uh, on the Sabbath day? Now, I want you to look at this. Now, Jesus considers sickness and disease likened to a deep 
dark pit. You know, a dark pit. And he says, you know, when people fall into this dark pit, we need to encourage them. We need to tell them, you know what, it's going to get better. I'm going to give you these scriptures. I, I, want, I want you to uh, get into these scriptures. I want you to meditate on these scriptures. I, wanna, I want you to say what God has said about you. Because he, he bore your sicknesses and he carried your pain. Amen. And by his stripes, we are healed. And so we understand, uh, especially in, in, in this time, you know, there's so much negativity. We are flooded with so much pessimism. There are so many skeptics and, and we're all influenced by it. But, you know, uh, Isaiah says in that famous chapter, he says in verse one, who is going to believe our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Who is going to get the healing touch? Who is the Lord going to touch? Those who believe the report. Amen. Now, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. I, I want to bring this out because many times we're not cognizant of uh, the variegated ways that uh, God employs his word to heal us. Now, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 17 and 18, or part A of verse 18, it says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Uh, uh, some other versions say the, the eyes of your heart. So just like on your body, you have eyes, you know, you have ears, your spirit has eyes. And the word of God says that uh, your, your, your spiritual eyes need to be open when it pertains to, to what God has for us. And I said that to say, Jesus said that in John 6, 63, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. Point number one. The word of God, the spirit life of God's word has to get into your heart. It has to, to get into uh, the eyes of your understanding so that you can perceive what God has for you. Healing is a spiritual work. You're, you know, you can talk until the cows come home, but until that healing that spiritual work of God's word gets in your heart. You're not going to perceive it. So it's going to take some time. You're going to have, you're going to, have to meditate the word. You're going to have to read the word. You're going to have to employ the discipline. As I said the other day, you're going to have to employ the discipline of saying what God has said about you. And, and it takes time. You know, it's, it's almost like going to the gym and getting back in shape. You know, you did it Monday. You did it Wednesday, hey, today's Friday, and you're not even thinking about going. Amen. Uh, go have a big dinner and go put your feet up. And uh, then, uh, unfortunately, you, you know, you, you get a little lax and then uh, you don't do it Saturday, you don't do it Sunday, and, and, and you, you're almost a week out before you've been to the gym. You know, you got to just employ the discipline of learning how to say, by his stripes, I was healed. Now, remember... True Bible faith is always based and built on the word of God. That, you, you know, if, if you're not basing your faith on what God's word says, it's not Bible faith. You know, you, you might be in some type of telepathy and, you know, mind, astro, uh, you know, the, just the, the mind games or, or the, uh, the philosophical views of the existentialists, but... You know, God wants you to know that there's a healing cure for you, and it's by way of his word. Now, healing is built and based on the word of God. And so the eyes of your understanding must be enlightened. You're going to have to spend time in the word of God because Jesus said, my words, they're spirit. And they are alive. Now, Ezekiel 47 says this. And he's, I believe he's, he's talking to the spirit of man. 
he says that uh, the man with the line in his hand, he's, he's talking about the waters. I believe it's the waters of the word of God. And, and they're, they're gushing out of the temple. Amen. And he says, the man with the line in his hand, he measured those waters and they were to the ankles. He said, then he measured them again and they were to the knees. He said he measured them again and they were to the waist. And then he said he measured them and, and it, no longer could they be measured because they were waters that overtook the man. All he could do was swim in those waters. But wherever those waters went, there was healing. I'm trying to say that, you know, if your word level is only in your feet, not even to your ankles yet. It's a possibility that you won't perceive with your heart, perceive with the eyes of your understanding that healing is for you. Amen. But God wants you well. Amen. He put a very dark yoke on Jesus so that we could receive our health and our healing. And basically, I'll tell you this. Most people would be healed if they just took an aggressive approach to the word of God. Now, uh, all through the scriptures, uh, we see all through the gospels, we see in, in Luke chapter 5, uh, you have the, uh, the paralytic man, um, and they cut, open, they cut open the roof, and uh, Luke chapter 5, 18 to 20, they cut open the roof, they let the man down, Jesus tells him, your sins are forgiven. Boom, he jumps off the couch and he goes, he goes a running. And then it says in, in, in Mark 5, uh, verses uh, 25 to 28, the, wood, the woman with the issue of blood, I mean, she's crawling. I mean, and she's saying what God's word says. She says, if I just touch the hem of his garment, my sickness and disease, my sick days are over. And then she touches the hem of his garment, boom, and healing manifests. Uh, Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52. Uh, and these are all illustrations of uh, people who pursue their healing. They had an aggressive approach. They weren't just sitting on the, you know, on the couch talking about, well, if he heals me, it is. You know, if, he, if he heals me, you know, if it God's will, he'll touch me. If it's not his will, you know, no, 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 no. There must be an aggressive approach. These, 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 these examples in the word of God are, 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 are examples now for uh, approaching uh, God in his word. Amen. They ran the word of God down. They were aggressive. Barnabas says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd says, would you just stop all that noise? He's not interested. <laughs> and Barnabas says, he will be today. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And he did not let the haters shut him down. You cannot let the haters shut you down. Or the religious people, you know. And I mean, it's easy to say, and, and, and I've, I've had uh, experience of two or three or four of, of, of getting my healing. And it's easy to say when you're well and everything's going right, well, if it be the Lord's will, I'll be healed. But man, when you're in that dark pit and when pain's in your body and when you can't halfway see your way, oh, it's some wonderful news for some uh, man or woman of God to tell you, by his stripes, you were healed. You are healed. Healing belongs to you. It is your bread. And so uh, the word of the Lord is very clear. Healing belongs to you. Healing is the children's bread. And uh, we have to continue to go over these scriptures. Amen. Take an aggressive approach so that we can get renewed in the spirit of our mind, because the proverb says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As he believes in his heart, so is he. Amen. It's like when you got born again, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe with all your heart, God raised him from the dead. Boom. Salvation came to you.
You know, we all have a different uh, uh, experience, but uh, I'll never forget that night in Germantown, Pennsylvania. It felt like a thousand pounds fell off my back that I didn't even know was there. Amen. But it came by me confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart that Jesus died for me over 2,000 years ago. And faith in his name gave me salvation. And faith in his name will give you your healing. But you need to start spending some time. Take advantage of these days being home. Take advantage of these days being home. Amen. Uh, take advantage and, and get in your word and, and just go through your concordance and, and read the healing scriptures and, and, and get your heart good and fortified. I mean, get robust in that healing anointing. Amen. Until you get to the place where you say, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Don't be tormented. The word of God says fear has torment. But the perfected love of Jesus, 1 John 4, the perfected love of Jesus, woo, it will cast out all fear. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. But he's giving you a, a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we're going to employ this healing anointing. Amen. Now remember this. And I close. My last close. The only word from God that will benefit you is the word that's in you. And people have a, this is a, this is very, uh, 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 it's controversial, you know, because there's a big difference between your brain and your heart. The brain is an organ. Your heart is the real you. Your heart is synonymous with your spirit. They're, they're, it's it's, it's uh, two terms that uh, represent one entity. Your heart and your spirit, they're synonymous. And there's a big difference between the word you have in your heart and the word you've memorized. Now, and it's wonderful to memorize and, and, and uh, you know, some of us, we came up memorizing the word and Sunday school and five day clubs. You know, if you were in them, you know, we were taught to memorize the word. But the word that the devil cannot gainsay, neither resist is the word that's in your heart. And in actuality, th that's the only word that really benefits you, the word that's in you. And so I believe it's uh, James 1, 21. It says, so now receive the engrafted word. That, that's the, that the engrafted is, a, is another name for tattoo. So James says, receive the tattoo word on your heart. Receive that tattoo word. Get that word tattooed. And everybody knows what tattoo is nowadays. I mean, you, you don't know what tattoo is nowadays. You, you, you're not been seeing too good. But uh, it says, receive the engrafted word, the tattoo word, it'll save your soul. Meaning, it'll get your mind moving in the right direction so that the data, the download can go to your heart. You know, if you're not thinking right, you're not going to be able to receive right. Amen. If you really feel like God is playing Russian roulette, <laughs> oh, not Russian roulette, forgive me. He's, he's playing roulette with the healing anointing. You know, you get it. You don't get it. Spin the wheel. Uh, wheel of healing. You get it. You don't get it. I mean, if that's the way you really feel, you won't be like the woman with the issue. You will never be aggressive. You'll be apathetic. And uh, thank God for the pharmacy and for the doctors. Uh, but you'll be at the mercy of modern medicine. But when modern medicine doesn't work, thank God we have a great physician. Woo! And he's perfected his medicine in his word. The cure is in the word. So as it says in Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. And as it rises big in you, it's going to run that sickness and disease out of your body. And you're going to rejoice, amen, like those who have found 
the healing cure. Proverbs 4.22, his word is life to them that find it. I've been searching. I've been searching. I've been reading my healing scriptures. I've been meditating on these scriptures. His word is life to them that find it. And medicine. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a cure to all their flesh. Well, my time is up. I thank you for yours. You know, go over these uh, scriptures, you know, just meditate, you know, on this uh, little uh, time of healing that we have uh, presented to you tonight. You know, play it over again. Play it over again. Take it to somebody who's not feeling well. Play it over again. You know, tell them, hey, you know what? And I'm going to do, I'm going to play this over and over and over next to you until something in you begins to say yes. Yes to the healing cure. It's my turn to be healed. It's my time to be healed. Amen. My, my time is up again. I thank you for yours. Have a wonderfully blessed evening. Lord bless you real good.